Hello and welcome. It's my pleasure to introduce the first of our three-part webinar series on scaling up nanomedicine formulations. Today's webinar, Scaling Nanoparticle Production from Bench to Clinic, will explain how the NanoAssembler platform harnesses microfluidic technology to overcome one of the greatest challenges in translating nanomedicine, namely scaling up production of nanomedicine formulations. The next webinar in the series will be Downstream Processing, where we will discuss buffer exchange, concentration, and sterile filtering of larger scale nanoparticle formulations. The third and final webinar in the series, Preclinical Risk Management, will address QA, QC concerns when scaling up to clinical manufacturing. I'm Shell Ip, Technical Marketing Specialist at Precision Nanosystems, Inc., and with me today is our speaker, our very own Kevin Ohm, Senior Manager of Pharmaceutical Operations. Kevin is an engineer with a decade of experience in microfabrication, microfluidic drug delivery devices, and process development. He earned his Bachelor's of Engineering and Management at McMaster University and his Master's of Applied Science at the University of British Columbia. Kevin has been with Precision uh, since near its inception, working on developing the NanoAssembler scale-up system and helping NanoAssembler users with scale-up process development. Now, before we begin, some basic housekeeping. If you have technical issues, please use the question or chat box and we will do our best to troubleshoot. If you have any questions for our speaker, please use those same features and we'll try to answer as many of your questions as possible at the end of the session. If we don't get to all of your questions, we'll answer them by email after the event. Now, without any further delay, Kevin, take it away. Thank you for the introduction, Shell, <clears throat> and thank you all for attending this webinar. In this webinar, we will discuss a couple of traditional methods of nanoparticle production and the challenges in scaling up using these methods, and how the NanoCellular platform addresses these challenges to seamlessly scale up nanoparticle production from the bench to the clinic. We will discuss lead candidate development using the NanoCellular benchtop and the scale up of these lead formulations using the NanoCellular Blaze and scale up system. We will present data from a representative scale-up patch demonstrating the scalability of nanoparticle production using the NanoAssembler platform. To begin, we will discuss the types of nanoparticle systems that can be made using the NanoAssembler technology. Liposomes have lipid bilayers that can be used to incorporate both hydrophobic and hydrophilic materials. Hydrophobic materials tend to get encapsulated within the bilayer whereas aqueous soluble materials tend to get encapsulated in the core. Lipid nanoemulsions are emulsion type systems having a liquid core and are usually used for encapsulating hydrophobic drugs. Solid lipid nanoparticles are emulsion based systems similar to nanoemulsions, but they have a solid core. Lipid nanoparticles contain ionizable lipids encapsulating a nucleic acid within a lipid based core and lipoplexes are lipid-based complexes of cationic lipids and nucleic acids. Similarly, polymeric nanoparticles such as nanospheres, nanocapsules, micelles, and polymerosomes can be used to encapsulate small molecule drugs, proteins, and peptides. Traditional techniques of forming liposomes, including thin film hydration, where thin lipid films or lipid cakes are hydrated forming large multilamellar vesicles. Once these vesicles have formed, reducing the size of the particle requires energy input in the form of sonic energy by sonication or mechanical energy by extrusion. Among traditional methods of nanoparticle preparation, the solvent displacement method, or nanoprecipitation, is a straightforward process. When a solution of hydrophobic polymer or lipid molecule is dissolved in a water miscible polar organic solvent and mixed with a large amount of aqueous buffer at a solid concentration above its thermodynamic solubility limit, supersaturation is reached and the nuclei form spontaneously, followed by nuclei growth by diffusion. This forms nanoparticles. The separation of nucleation and growth is key for the formation of nanoparticles with low polydispersity. Very short mixing times or fast mixing help ensure uniform particle formation. In the case of beaker methods, the mixing is slow and not uniform. The local environments within the bulk solution 
have varying amounts of organic solvent and aqueous buffer, resulting in different levels of supersaturation and different nucleation rates, leading to different stages of growth. The result is larger and more polydispersed nanoparticles. These larger particles can be further reduced in size by processing through sonication and extrusion. Large multilamellar vesicles subjected to sonication typically produces small unilamellar vesicles with a diameter in the range of 15 to 15 nanometers. The most common instrumentation used for preparation of sonicated particles are bath and probe tip sonicators. It is nearly impossible to reproduce the conditions of sonication and size variation between batches produced at different times is common. Lipid extrusion is a technique in which uh, lipid suspension is forced through a polycarbonate filter with a defined pore size. Extrusion through 100 nanometer pore filters typically yields nanoparticles with a mean diameter of 120 nanometers to 140 nanometers. These traditional methods of breaking down large, larger particles in small, into smaller particles using high energy and mechanical forces are considered top-down approaches. These traditional top-down approaches to nanoparticle production are not easy to scale up. In other words, processes developed for producing nanoparticles on the milliliter scale are not translated readily into a process for producing nanoparticles in the hundreds of mils or liters. In the case of microfluidics, the mixing speed can be very fast. The most basic mixers are Y or T junctions, where nanoparticle forming materials are dissolved in solvent and combined with an antisolvent under laminar flow. Mixing occurs by diffusion at the interface between the two fluids, forming nanoparticles. However, mixing by diffusion suffers the drawback of requiring very low flow rates in the microliter per minute range and lower concentration of particles formed. The nanosolvent, on the other hand, employs a microfluidic mixer which folds the two miscible solvents together in a rapid and controlled manner, increasing the surface area of the interface, reducing the diffusional distance, and decreasing mixing time. The low reaction volumes of the microfluidic mixer creates a controlled local environment for nanoparticle formation. The nanocellular microfluidic approach is a bottom-up self-assembly method, and there are many advantages compared to the traditional top-down approach. Namely, the microfluidics provides a controllable, reproducible, and scalable process, which saves time in nanoparticle development. Next, we will discuss nanoparticle production using the nanocellular technology. The nanocellular microfluidic technology takes advantage of laminar flow for reproducible mixing conditions. The rapid mixing speed and low reaction volumes result in uniform particle formation. Low energy input and low shear mixing minimizes the forces and impact on sensitive materials and drug payloads. And the scale up is achieved through operating mixers in parallel. The nanoparticle development process can be a complex and iterative process. It starts with the conceptual nanoparticle concerning the drug payload and polymer or lipid delivery system. Formulation and manufacturing process development is done empirically where the nanoparticle composition and manufacturing process parameters are varied. Therefore, the throughput of the manufacturing equipment limits the speed of nanoparticle development. Once a lead candidate is selected, the transition to scale up and producing larger volumes for preclinical talk studies and finally to clinical manufacturing is traditionally a non-trivial endeavor. The NASA platform addresses the issue of throughput and transition to scale up with the NASA benchtop, blaze, and scale up system. The NASA platform shortens the time needed to bring a conceptual nanoparticle to the clinic. Lead candidate development can be done rapidly in a single digit milliliter scale on the nanocellular benchtop. The exact process parameters can be transferred to the nanocellular blaze, a continuous flow manufacturing system to produce nanoparticles in the tens to hundreds of mil in volume. 
Finally, to scale up to clinical manufacturing volumes, this is achieved by direct scaling of the process parameters to the scale-up system with parallel mixtures to produce liters of nanoparticle formulation. The nanosimilar benchtop is a small footprint computer-controlled instrument intended for rational design of novel nanoparticles. One and a half mil to 15 mil nanoparticle formulations and upwards of 30 nanoparticle formulations can be made with reproducible results. The computer-controlled manufacturing process parameters allow for a high degree of repeatability. The manufacturing process can be easily transferred between operators and to external facilities to produce similar nanoparticle products. Once the formulation and manufacturing process is well established, DOE can be performed to study process robustness and evaluate the effects of formulation and process variabilities on a nanoparticle product. This is all done using the NAS on benchtop with the end goal of achieving a robust and scalable process. The nanocellular microfluidic mixing has outperformed previous generation nanoparticle production using another inline mixing technology. The sRNA lipid nanoparticle produced using the microfluidic mixer yielded a non-dispersed particle with a lower mean particle size compared to the inline macro mixer. The higher quality particles made on the nanocellular benchtop also resulted in elevated in vivo activity compared to the inline macro mixer. With a robust formulation and manufacturing process established, the next step towards clinical manufacturing is scaling up. The NASA platform makes the scale-up process relatively straightforward with direct transfer of manufacturing processes from the benchtop to the blaze instrument and scale-up system. The NASA assembler blaze uses a continuous flow pumping system, and the microfluidic mixing architecture is identical to the nanosimilar bench top. Formulation and manufacturing process parameters can be transferred directly using a software interface similar to the bench top, producing volumes up to one liter. Inline dilution is a feature available as an option to stabilize the nanoparticles for downstream processing. And the end result is larger volumes of nanoparticles produced with the nanosimilar blaze, which can be used for preclinical studies, including PLP talks and early CMC studies. Scaling up to clinical manufacturing is also straightforward with the nanosilver scale up system. The scale up system is designed for CGMP manufacturing and uses continuous flow pumps with a fully disposable fluid path to eliminate the need for cleaning validation. Scale-up is achieved by operating microfluidic mixtures in parallel for increased throughput. In other words, the robust formulation and manufacturing processes developed for a single microfluidic mixer on the benchtop and the blaze is scaled up incrementally by a number of microfluidic mixers operating in parallel. SOPs are provided for rapid technology transfer of the scale-up system, and the modularity of the system allows for a wide range of manufacturing scales. For example, a standard process with eight microfluidic mixers operating in parallel can produce approximately six liters of nanoparticles per hour and 25 liters in, a little, in as little as four hours. To illustrate the process for clinical scale-up manufacturing, the organic solvent in aqueous buffers containing nanoparticle forming materials are pumped through the nanocellular scale-up system using continuous flow pumps. Manifolds split the two inlet streams into the identical microfluidic mixtures in parallel where the solutions are mixed forming nanoparticles. The nanoparticles are then collected, diluted, and passed onto downstream processing. Now, we look at some data from scaling up a nanoparticle formulation from the milliliter to liter scale. We can see from the cumulative fractions collected 
that the same size monodispersed RNA lipid nanoparticles are produced throughout the five liter manufacturing run. This scale up run shows good agreement with the nanoparticles produced using the same process on the banana assembler bench top. Similarly, we see seamless scale up with the RNA lipid nanoparticles being produced across the single mixer bench top and blaze instruments and the eight mixer scale up system. This demonstrates the power and ease of scaling up with microfluidics. Further analysis on the RNA lipid nanoparticle showed similar lipid to RNA ratios for batches scaled up across three systems. And finally, the in vivo activity of the RNA lipid nanoparticles produced using the system showed equivalent activity in vivo, demonstrating the scalability of nanoparticle production using a nanocellular platform. In summary, nanoparticle development starts on the bench scale, where lead candidate development can be done in the milliliter scale on the nanocellular bench top. Microfluidic mixing using laminar flow enables controlled mixing and reproducible results. The exact process parameters developed on the bench top can be transferred to the blaze, a continuous flow manufacturing instrument, to produce nanoparticles up to one liter in volume. Finally, the scale up to clinical manufacturing is achieved by direct scaling of the process parameters to the scale up system with parallel mixers. Minimal process development is required for the seeing the scale up of a robust nanoparticle production process. Thank you, Kevin, for a wonderful presentation. We do have time for a few questions, uh, taking one from the field. Uh, the first question, how quickly does the microfluidic system reach steady state and what volume of material is wasted? The NASA instrument provides uh, uh, flow using positive dis displacement pumps and steady state is reached relatively quickly uh, within seconds. Uh, in terms of waste volumes, the nanosembler bench top wastes about 300 microliters and the bench top and scale up systems waste about 5 mils and 50 to 100 mils respectively. The hold up volume in the scale up system uh, contributes to the waste volume and it may seem like a large volume, but given the liters of volume that the scale-up system is designed to produce, it equates to a low percentage of waste. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, the next question from the field, uh, can scale-up be achieved by increasing the total flow rate rather than putting mixers in parallel? Uh, for lambda flow and controlled mixing, the flow rate should be within the recommended operating range of the microfluidic mixer and an as level batch top. Uh, in theory, higher flow rates can increase throughput but as the flow rate transitions away from the laminar flow regime, the nanoparticle characteristics may not be as good and uh, repeatable. Right. Thank you. Uh, and I think we have time for just one more, and it's a pretty good one. Uh, what is the typical solvent content uh, in the formulation, and how is the solvent removed? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. So solvent removal or buffer exchange and concentration will be the focus of our next scale-up webinar. Uh, we didn't have time to discuss any downstream processing methods, but there are uh, varying uh, ways to remove solvents on the bench scale, uh, such as dialysis and centrifugal uh, filter methods. Uh, for larger volumes, the tangential flow filtration, or TFF, is the method to use for buffer change and concentration. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, and thank you guys so much for joining us today. If we didn't get to your questions, we will answer them via email after the event. Uh, please stay tuned in the meantime for more details about upcoming webinars in the Scale Up series. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about the Nano Assembler, please visit precisionnanosystems.com. And don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. From Kevin and myself, have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you for your time. Cheers.